Hello, hello, hello. I am the Linux Match. You won't believe what I did today. I had a computer that had Linux Mint in it, and I wiped it out, and I did a manual Arch installation with it encrypted. Now, of course, I couldn't do it on camera because this was a real hard drive that I was doing and not a virtual machine. Now, you ask, now, why would you delete Linux Mint to put Arch Linux in it? When you already have other computers, when your main computer has Arch Linux on it. Well, in this particular computer, I had Linux Mint Debian installed for a year. And, uh, you know, Linux Mint came out with their new ISO a month ago, based on Ubuntu. And I've been waiting for the new Debian one to come out, based on the new Debian, Debian 12. And they're taking their time. They want to make sure everything is good. So, I went and installed the new uh, Linux Mint Ubuntu on it. I had it on there for a few weeks. But you know what? I don't like it. I do love Linux Mint. And of course, Arch is my favorite. But I really don't like the Linux Mint that's based on Ubuntu. So, I wiped out the hard drive this morning. And I did a brand new manual installation of Arch Linux, encrypted manually. Anyways, I've gone on too long about that. What I did today is I typed out instructions on how to do a manual install of Arch Linux with encryption. And another set of instructions, how to install Arch Linux manually without encryption. And a third set of instructions, how to do a post installation. And that's free for you to have it, for you to download. So I'm going to show you how to get it in the terminal. And I'm going to show you how to get it on the website. And also, just before I go there, I want to do something else. Every month... Arch Linux comes out with a brand new ISO, usually on the first of the month. The odd time they're late, but usually they're on time. And of course, that's not for updating your system. That's for brand new installations. So the August 1st ISO, the installer, the automated installer is not working. At least it's not working for me. And of course, I've mentioned it in recent videos. And uh, so let's go into my virtual machine. And this is a virtual machine of Arch Linux that I did manually and manually encrypted it. But this is not the one I did today because the one I did today was on a real machine. This is a virtual machine. But still, I did this manually. Manual installation of Arch Linux and manually encrypted it. And anyways, let's just move my head. There we go. So let's open up Firefox. And let's go to Arch Linux. Because ah, there's something I want to show you. And, well, I'm at the mirrors. Let's go home. There. This is the home page of Arch Linux. And let's go to their wiki. Now, on their wiki, we're going to type in Arch Install. And I'm going to make this a little bigger. And do I have to get my face out of the way or what? So this is the Arch install. This is the Arch Linux wiki where they talk about their automated Arch installer. And it tells you this Arch install. They call it Arch install, not the automated Arch installer. That's the name I gave it. Is a helper library which automates the installation of Arch Linux. So they give you a warning. The recommended way of installing Arch Linux is to follow the installation guide. And there's a link to it. So if you follow the installation guide here, and you know what? Let's just go home. Let's go home. Let's go to download. Now, when you go to download the ISO, here's a link to the installation guide as well. So, this is the installation guide. 
and it tells you how to verify the signatures. Let's go to installation. I'm just going to look at this very quickly. I'm not going to spend too much time on this. Supposedly, if you follow these instructions, you'll be able to install Arch Linux the manual way. Now, when I'm looking at these, a lot of these things I'm doing, not all of them, but a lot of these things I do. But when I first tried to install Arch Linux the manual way a couple years ago, I followed this and I failed. And I failed many times. And I watched quite a few videos from different Linux people on how to install Arch Linux the manual way, and I failed again. And then there's one guy that I watched. I followed his video, and for the first time, I was successful in installing Arch Linux the manual way. And that was a few years ago now. <laughs> and I've done it many, many times. And should I tell you who that was? Can you guess? I bet you you can't guess. The one video that got me over the hump and enabled me to install Arch Linux the manual way two years ago was, are you ready? Can you guess it? Mental Outlaw. That's right, folks. Mental Outlaw. Anyways, <laughs> I have installed Arch the manual way, manual way uh, maybe 20 times or more. And I've only installed it the manual way with encryption maybe five times now. And recently, like this summer. This summer is the first time when I learned how to install Arch Linux the manual way with encryption. But I've been installing it the manual way without encryption for a couple years. Anyways, so these are the instructions. And like I said, when I tried a couple years ago following these instructions, I failed. But when I'm looking through the instructions now, I can see I'm doing a lot of these things. So anyways, you could just follow the instructions. You could go to Arch Linux and follow the instructions and do it yourself. Or you could follow my instructions. So what I'm going to do is, let's go home. I'm going to type in the search field. Oh, and you know what? My face is gone. Should I bring back my face? Ah, that's better. Okay, so what we're going to do is type in Linux Mensch GitLab. And here we are here. Let's click it on. And let's just make this a little larger. And let's just click on one of these. And here we are. So I have four folders in here, one for Linux Mint Ubuntu, one for Arch Linux, one for Debian, and one for FreeBSD. I have a README. So let's go into the Arch. Here's my awesome Window Manager folder with its configuration files, Qtile, my X resources, and so forth. So what I have here, and I just put these files in today, I have base install encrypted. Let's click it on. And this is it here. Guidelines for installing Arch Linux with encryption, the manual way. And I don't know if I need to make that a little larger. And these are the instructions. And at the bottom, it tells you how to, after the fact, how to change the encryption password in the terminal manually and how to test it to make sure it's functioning properly before you reboot because you don't want to reboot and get locked out. So that's this one. Let's go back. Now this is base install not encrypted. So these are the instructions to do a manual install of Arch Linux, but not encrypted. And it just walks you through everything step by step. So let's say you don't want to download it in a terminal and you don't want to download my whole GitLab repository. When you're in here, you could just click on this one and it will download this specific file only. In the event that you don't want to download my whole repository and you don't want to do it in a terminal, just click on this one. Then I have, so I have the base install encrypted text. 
base install not encrypted text. Now these two instructions only walk you through to a base installation with root. They don't give you a user and they don't give you any apps. So then my third file, here it is here. My third file is called post install text. See, and I just put it up an hour ago. So these three files, I just posted them an hour ago. So they're brand new. Post install text. So this text, guidelines for Arch post installation, login as root, tells you how to add a user, how to give them a password, how to add him to the sudoer file to give him sudo privileges. And, you know, I tell you here, hey, you can install your own apps, window manager and desktop environment, or you can install mine. And it, I have right here how to get it, get clone and how to get my files in the terminal and so forth. And again, if you uh, want to download this file only, just come to this website, click on this arrow, and it's going to download this file only into your hard drive. And you can look at any of my files this way. Like, uh, you know, sometimes it's easier to do it this way than in the terminal. So let's go to uh, my auto app, for instance. Here's my auto app file. Oh, well, that doesn't read well. <laughs> so you're going to have to go all the way here, move the slider around to see all the apps that you're going to get if you run my auto app file. These are all the apps you're going to get. Maybe they're easy to read in a term than in a terminal. So anyways, like I said, these are the three files I added today base install encrypted, base install not encrypted, and let's go down, post install text. So anyways, let's get out of here and let's go to the terminal. Let's make that a little larger. So I'm always making changes to my GitLab repository and I don't know if anyone's even using my files. I have no way of knowing who's using them or how many people are downloading them or anything. But anyways, what you do is if you don't have my files and you want my GitLab repository, just type in git clone https colon slash slash gitlab.com and I'm going to run out of space here so I'm going to make this a little smaller gitlab.com slash artibis1 slash mench.git and if you do that it's going to download the whole thing now if you already have it you should update it because I added three files today and I added those three files today and I changed some other files as well so if you have it and you want my updates, then you're going to do, you're going to CD into Mitch and you're going to do a git pull. You're going to type in git pull. Whoa. <laughs> so I haven't updated my GitLab repository in this uh, virtual machine since I did the install which is, I don't know, I think it was a few weeks ago. Let's do it last. My last install, I installed this virtual machine on August 5th, so it was a few weeks. So now my GitLab has been, um, repository has been updated and let's go into it. Well, actually we're in it because you have to go into it before you do a git pull. Green, let's do an LL. I don't know, is that too large? So my head's not in the way anyways. So I have three folders. I have Arch, Debian, FreeBSD, and Linux Mint Ubuntu. So let's CD into Arch. These are the files. So up here I have base install encrypted, base install not encrypted, 
and I have post install text. So let's let's do the base install encrypted. So I'm going to type in vim base install. Unless we can pick whichever one we want, the not encrypted or the encrypted. Let's pick the encrypted. And let's go into it. So that's it there. That's it in the terminal. Guidelines for installing Arch Linux with encryption the manual way. And if you go down, well, I guess I'm going too fast for you to read. <laughs> we go all the way to the bottom, like I showed you on the website. At the end of this one, I'm telling you how to change the encryption password in the terminal after the fact and how to test the password before you do a reboot to make sure your encryption password is working. So anyways, let's go up there. Let's close this file. And so, like I said, um, I did base install with encryption, base install without encryption. I did um, a post install text and I changed some other files in here. So if you already downloaded this a long time ago, you should do a git pull. I'm gonna close that. Today, I very carefully <laughs> typed out instructions. Well, actually, it was a work in progress, but I finished it today. One is how to do an installation of Arch Linux the manual way with encryption, how to do an installation of Arch Linux the manual way without encryption, and a third text on post installation, how to do a post installation of Arch Linux after your base install. And I posted those files to my GitLab repository. And finally, for the first time, I showed you how to access my GitLab repository on the internet on, with the web browser and how to download a single file if that's all you want. And of course, I showed you again how to download it in the terminal and how to do an update in the terminal. And like I said, I'm always changing my GitLab repository, so you should do a git pull once in a while. Oh yes, and if you're doing a manual installation for the first time, or you're doing a manual installation with encryption for the first time, please do it in a virtual machine or do it in an extra computer that you have laying around. I hope you learned something today, and if you did, please like the video, and don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Thank you for watching. I am the Linux Mensch. Bye-bye.